Hi guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. In today's video, we'll be discussing how to open a patient's airway. So your airway is everything between the mouth and the lungs. And what we're gonna be discussing here is how to open that, how to make sure that there is direct communication between the lungs and the air that somebody needs to live. So we're not going to be discussing how to provide rescue breath for a patient. That will be in a later video that I'll do. But this is a precursor to that. If we go to the initial assessment, it goes airway, then breathing. So the securing of somebody's airway or the opening of somebody's airway is going to be your first step. So what are the signs of a airway, potential airway obstruction and what's gonna cause it? So an airway obstruction can occur in anybody with an altered level of consciousness um, and potentially somebody that's completely conscious if they're choking. This is not a Heimlich video. There's a lot of stuff out there on that. I'd advise you learn the Heimlich. We're gonna be talking more about the altered level of responsiveness. So the most common cause of an airway obstruction is going to be somebody's tongue. If they're unresponsive, they're not able to protect it, that tongue is falling back. So the first uh, maneuver that you can do as a provider um, to open somebody's airway, if you come to them and they've got snoring respirations, um, if they're not breathing regularly, or if they're not breathing, uh, we need to open that manually. So your first option is going to be a head tilt chin lift. And that's simply putting your hand on their forehead and their chin and lifting uh, the patient's head up. That's going to lift the tongue off the uh, oral pharynx and give you a better um, line down to the lungs so that you can provide those breaths for them or if they're still breathing on their own they can effectively um, breathe. The second option if you suspect they have a spinal injury obviously it's not that great to be cranking their head back like that so your second option is going to be uh, a jaw thrust maneuver and that's grabbing right behind their mandible and pulling forward and that's going to jut their jaw out and once again pull the tongue off the oropharynx. This is a lot harder to do especially if you're on your own so if you try that once and it fails go ahead and go to the head tilt chin lift because the potential for a spinal injury is never going to outweigh um, in, in very real airway obstruction. If you're providing rescue breaths for the patient both of these techniques should be used uh, in conjunction with that mask. And it's pretty easy to do, you just have to alter your grip on the mask slightly. There are some tools out there that are gonna help you open a patient's airway. Those are your NPAs and your OPAs, your nasal pharyngeal airways and your oral pharyngeal airways. Your oral pharyngeal airways are a plastic hook-like uh, device that's going to be measured. So it's gonna be measured from the corner of the mouth to the angle of the jaw. And those are gonna be inserted one of two ways. The by the book method is going to be a cross finger technique. So putting your thumb and your pointer finger um, in the patient's mouth and opening like that, then inserting your uh, OPA at a 180 degree angle and rotating down into the pharynx. And that's gonna cup the tongue, bring that forward, and make sure that you have an open airway. Drawback of your OPAs is that they will trigger a gag reflex. So these are generally only used on somebody that's in cardiac arrest or very, very close to cardiac arrest. And you don't wanna be putting these in a conscious patient because they're gonna vomit. Now you're gonna have another airway issue down the road. So your other option, and what I would personally recommend you carrying as a layperson, is going to be a NPA. An NPA is a nasal pharyngeal airway, measured very similar to an OPA, except it's from the corner of the nose to the earlobe. Now it's worth mentioning that most of these come in uh, a set, so a variety of sizes from very small to very large, and it's up to you to find the correct size. So the first step in inserting that is measuring it, putting on some lubricant, which it should come with, and then making sure that it's going to follow the anatomic position so they're curved and facing the bevel towards the septum of the nose. That's gonna keep the tip of that from getting um, stuck to the side of the uh, pharynx once you've inserted it. Once you've done all of that, you take it and you just insert it in line with the patient. 
If you can't get it in one nostril, you can take it to the other nostril. It's okay if the bevel's facing away, it's just not ideal. Both of these are going to provide a open um, oral airway for you, and they're good to be used in conjunction with your uh, bag mask device or your rescue mask if you are providing rescue uh, breaths to that patient. It's important to note that neither of these devices is going to secure an airway, so that means that gastric content could still potentially come up and then cause you issues down the line. This is simply to open the airway. If you want to secure an airway, uh, you can use some commercial devices like the King LTD, um, which is a superglottic airway that can be inserted and inflated uh, in the esophagus to provide that protection. That can be used for BLS providers, although um, I would not use this unless you are trained in it and actually uh, authorized to do so by your medical director. That's all I have for you today. Feel free to like this video and subscribe if you're so inclined. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below, and I will see you next time.